Let's turn our Bibles. I was going to say, let's have Army and Navy stand up and move sides, but you guys have figured it out after all those hints at the beginning of, the, of our camp time. But Psalm 106 once again, and also if you can pick up Romans chapter 1, and um, I hope that you're, you're ready this morning. I know that you've got a lot of um, fun things for the afternoon, but we want to also just, just give ourselves over to the Word of God. But Psalms 106, we were there last night, if you remember. On the first night, we talked about remember now. And then yesterday morning, uh, we, we talked a little bit about remember you and not forgetting who you are in Christ. Then the, the ladies and the men split up. And really the men, we spoke about remember manhood. And I'm sure you ladies, you spoke about remember womanhood. And then last night, we spoke about remember, remember your generation. And so this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about something that's related to just remembering and why it is that we go into a mode of forgetting. And it's something that's really obvious, actually. Um, who this morning, just be honest, and I'm going to tell you, we can tell if you're lying. Okay? Be honest. Put your hand up if you brushed your teeth. All right, great. I see some honest people who didn't put their hands up. If you didn't put your hand up straight after this, please brush your teeth, okay? Chewing gum is not a substitute. But I'll tell you now, you, you know, growing up, for me, it was a constant reminder to brush my teeth, right? It was a constant reminder. My parents and probably your parents and probably your leaders this week have emphasized, please brush your teeth. And some of you, you did brush your teeth, and already you need to brush your teeth again, all right? There's something called the death breath, all right? But um, it, it's, it's a need. Why? Because actually there's a great cost, and, and I want to maybe confirm with, with Cam here as a professional opinion, when you don't brush your teeth, it's really bad because then your teeth over time gets rotten, yeah. right? Is that correct? Am I... So the Google was right. Okay, good. But... I'll tell you that, that sometimes it's the really obvious things, guys, that, that we miss that actually costs us a great deal. You know, some people have gotten really bad infections to the point that they've died because simply they just didn't brush their teeth. You, you understand that, that there's actually a great value to it, not just that your breath will, will smell fresh, and you won't offend your friend or your neighbor. It, you won't, uh, it, it's not just about that, but actually there's a real health benefit to it. But what we don't understand is if we neglect that obvious thing, then over time, actually, it, there, there's a real cost. And there's a real, uh, there's a real consequence to you not doing that obvious thing. And, and this morning... I'm going to talk about something really obvious that, that, firstly, it helps us not to forget. But then, secondly, it has real benefits. But the way I'm going to sell you the benefit to it is by showing you the danger if you're not this. All right, so turn with me, look at Psalm 106, and, and I'll show you something here if you pay attention in Romans chapter 1. And, and just quickly, I just was reminded this just now as well with your with the challenge i gave you yesterday you only have till dinner time tonight to get that in all right and so just to clarify i know many of you have been thinking about that it's all the being things your what you are in the that god says in the bible not the doing things all right that's what i'm looking for so until dinner tonight that that's that's all you have so work hard. I know that you, you still don't give up. Uh, make a comeback. You know, if you're maybe this side, I'm not sure. We don't know what the points are. But don't give up, okay? You still have a, a whole day ahead of you. But um, also, I wanna, I'm going to check today, and I want to just uh, observe if uh, each team, I'm going to award one team just a team spirit award, all right? I'll just give, give you points. So... So don't give up. There's plenty of opportunity. But going back to our message this morning, look at Psalm 106. And we read 
a couple of the verses last night, but we'll read the beginning part of the psalm now in verse 1. Notice how the psalm begins. Praise ye the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. And our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not, notice that, the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. And you know, the, the first sentence or the first part of a paragraph often will, will allude to the main thought and the main reason why the, 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 the next following sentences are even in existence. And that first sentence starts with, praise ye the Lord. Then he says this, oh, give thanks. And really what the psalm is, it's a psalm of contrast. It's a psalm reminding them that it's important, firstly, right there, right at the beginning sentence, that outlines really the whole purpose of this whole uh, song is to give thanks to the Lord. And then he goes on and he talks about how there's, there's different things that have happened to the nation that were, of, of, uh, uh, were in many ways regrettable. They, they forgot the works of God. Remember, we learned that last night. They remembered not certain things. But, but the point was this. That we are to give thanks. That's how it begins. And here this morning, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the real cost of unthankfulness. Because thankfulness and remembrance come hand in hand. And this morning, you might think, well, I understand, Pastor, I understand that you should say thanks. And, you know, if someone does something for you, you should be grateful and, and you know that's another thing that so often we're reminded of hey when I know for my kids immediately when uh, when something is done done something for them someone does something for them we immediately go as parents hey say thank you because we want to build a good habit in their lives of just giving thanks but many of us here this morning we don't we don't fully comprehend the great cost if we don't have this spirit and this attitude of just giving thanks. In fact, I, 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 would, I would hasten to say that some of us here woke up this morning and those words haven't even been uttered out of our hearts, let alone our mouths, to the very God that gave us life once again. And it's been a while since you just contemplated and thought and, and were moved enough to just give genuine thanks and genuine gratitude to a very good and loving God. And, and you know, I want to tell you that the, one, of the, 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 one of the characteristics of the last days is that people are just unthankful. And guys, listen, we're living in the last days. You, you see all around us, the world is just turning waxing worse and worse and, and there's just a, a great uh, pleasure seeking that is so inherent in the, 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 la the characteristics of the last days but as part of that is just unthankfulness and, and you might just think well what's the big deal it's just two words thank you what if I don't say it what if I don't have that spirit and what if I don't feel that way I want to tell you, there are great consequences, and we'll, we'll out outline that in Scripture today. And I want to just remind you that there is much to be thankful for this day. Uh, you understand that, that, it, that you woke up this morning, and, and whilst you may have not had as much rest as you've wanted, whilst you may have woken up and you found another blemish on your face, 
Whilst you may have woken up and the weariness of the week has gotten to you and now you're feeling like, is this camp going to be over soon? And you might be thinking, is this day going to last? Am I going to even last this day? The breakfast, you know, those pancakes look so promising with all that syrup and it was bleh. <laughs> right? There's still much to be thankful for. And you need to get back, and we need to get back to a place and an attitude and a spirit of thankfulness. And, and that's really the subject matter as we think about this passage of Scripture here this morning, is that the, remember thankfulness, right? There's a true cost to unthankfulness. And, and I want to say firstly what thankfulness is. And you, I think you understand what it is. You know, to be thankful means to be grateful. The dictionary meaning of it is to be impressed with a sense of kindness received and ready to acknowledge it. You know, you, you, we just had Christmas and maybe in your home, just like in our home, the tradition is that we buy presents for our kids and, and we try to, as much as we can, understand what they would like and we go out of our way and we brave the shopping centers uh, and we go in there and we try to fight people for the parking spots that everyone else wants. And we get in there and we buy something. And, and really all we want is not just a, a sense of we did what we should have done. But we get a sense from our kids that they're thankful. Right? That, that's all we want. They, they didn't have to buy us a gift. They didn't have to, uh, they didn't have to go and do extra chores. They didn't have to suddenly come up with some money to pay for that. No, all we want is two words that are genuinely felt. Why? For the kindness received. Right? It's thank you. And, and, and God likes that too. Well, what thankfulness is, if you think about it, in essence, when directed at God, thankfulness is acknowledging, God, acknowledging God's goodness in our circumstance whatever that circumstance is, right? It's, it's, an, it's a spirit, it's an attitude, it's a characteristic, and it's a, it's a part of our character that regardless of the circumstance that we face, we understand how good God ultimately is, and so we're thankful anyway. You, you think about the, 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 the type of sufferer that in the Bible, if you know the Bible a little bit, uh, if you've ever read through the book of Job, you understand that Job, he suffered a great loss. He woke up one day and all of his family had been obliterated. He woke up one day and his whole, his whole uh, world was turned upside down. All of his business, all of his livelihood, all of the things that he thought made him to be Job was taken away. And you know what Job said? You know, the immediate thing that Job did is he worshipped. The immediate thing he did was he blessed God. You know what that is? He gave thanks. Can you imagine that? You know, some of us here, when we don't have the right cereal in our bowl in the morning, we won't say thanks. Some of us here, we wake up and we're slightly off edge and we're slightly moody or we're slightly tooty, the toot and the mood. And suddenly, there's just that spirit of thankfulness has left us. And I'm saying that thankfulness is a character. That thankfulness isn't just an action. It's not just words. It's not just things that we say. No, it's a spirit. It's a, it's a character. And what we learn about thankfulness in the Bible actually should bring us to a place of understanding about its importance. And firstly, I want you to note, and you won't need to turn there, but you can write this down. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, let me read the verse for you. It says, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, um, I, I haven't really preached about the will of God this week. It typically at youth camp, we'll mention it at least once. And, and maybe in your devotions, that's come up. But, but you know, many of us here, and, and I hope you do, hope you're seeking the will of God for your life. I hope you're, you're thinking, what is God's plan for my life? You know, many times we're, we're so obsessed with the mysteries of our lives. Like, you know, who's gonna, who are we going to marry one day? What is going to be our life's call? 
uh, what, where are we going to, you know, what kind of house am I going to live in? All of those things that are the mysteries of life, you'll find out one day. But we won't do what is already revealed as the will of God in His Word. You know what one of those things are that is the will of God for you and I? Is that we would simply give thanks. That's how important it is. You, you understand that if you disobey in the clear will of God, it's unlikely that He will trust you with the secrets of the will of God in the other parts of your life. And so much of, of what we, we sort of reach out for is actually the things that is in God's hand and in God's business. But the things that we should have in our hand, like thankfulness this morning, some of you jump because you're asleep. His revealed will, listen, we won't do. And listen, thankfulness is part of His revealed will. You know, it's also, it's something, secondly, that, that God notices. You remember that story where Jesus healed the ten lepers? Remember, nine came back and one didn't? It's the other way around. One came back and nine didn't, right? <laughs> Who's asleep now, right? And, and Jesus goes, weren't there ten of you? He says, where, where are they? And what mattered to him was, listen, I, where's the thankfulness? Where's the gratitude? Where's that, under, where's that understanding that you were given some grace and given some kindness and there's some good things that have happened in your life and, and, and I've been gracious to you. And you know, God noticed it. God noticed when there was a lack of it. But then it also it's an attitude that precedes access to God. You know, uh, I hope that you come away from this week and you just want more of God. That you recognize the power in the Word of God. You recognize the power of fellowship with God. But you know, if you want more of God, you know the way you're, you're going to find it? It's the road of thankfulness. In Psalm 100 verse 4, and again, don't turn there, let me just read it for you for sake of time. Notice what he says, enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. He says, be thankful unto him. Right? And bless his name. But how do you enter? Enter his gates with thanksgiving. You, you want access to God? You, you, want a, uh, you want your prayer to go to another level? You, you want it to be where you really sense God's presence and God's spirit and God's play and your place amongst that. Listen, the way you're going to do that is to have an attitude and a character and a spirit of thankfulness. It's really simple. He says they enter his gates with thanksgiving. You know, even in our prayer life, the Bible says in Philippians 4 6, it says, Be careful for nothing. He says, But in everything by prayer and supplication, but notice this, with. The next word is thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. You know, sometimes we approach God a little bit like He's some sort of vending machine. Like we pay our dues to Him. We pay the cost and then sometimes with, an, with a spirit and an attitude of thanksgiving. You know, I wonder how many of us actually took the time to pray this morning. I wonder if, if we just took the time and I... And, you know, Alex was asked to pray this morning. I'm glad he started off. I was listening at the back. He started off with thanks. And you know, that, that's, a great, that's a great pattern for you and I. If we're going to start, don't start off with your to-do list for God. Don't start off with all that you want. No, start off with thanksgiving. How about thanking Him for all that you have right now? How about thanking Him for all that He's accomplished already? How about recognizing that if it were not for His mercy, we would be consumed? And how about remembering to give thanks? You know, so many times I know in my life that when, when there's a dire need, when something is, is so urgent and so pressing and that, that, that I come into prayer and, and, you know, God is gracious, I, I think He'll still hear but you know, it's not just about God hearing, it's about us pleasing God. 
And if you want to please God, and if you want your prayer life to be effective and effectual, then you know the thing that you, you want to do is you want to get access by means of thanksgiving. By means of thanksgiving. And so I hope that, that it's already impressed on you just the need for, for thankfulness this morning. But what does unthankfulness look like? You know, we read there in Psalm 106, he says that, that after all of that, he says, we have sinned with our fathers. You know, part of that, that sin that he was referring to, he's going he's gonna to go, get into it, so that forgetting. But really what preceded that was just, a, just unthankfulness. You think about the nation of Israel. They came out, and remember we spoke about it last night. They, they came out of that, that whole ordeal in Egypt. They were slaves. They, they were oppressed. They were suffering every day under hard bondage. And for 400 years they called out, and finally God sent someone, Moses, to go. And as soon as they get to some sort of predicament, the Red Sea, what did they do? They started to murmur and complain. You know what, what actually preceded that? And the Bible will, will uh, and we won't take the time, but in Hebrews, it talks about their discontentment. You know what that is? A lack of thankfulness. They lacked thankfulness. Listen, they, they just, they, their unthankfulness caused some things. And, and what, what it was, firstly, this morning, is they became forgetful. They forgot God's mercies. They forgot God's works. They forgot, uh, they forgot the, the greatness of their salvation. They forgot the God who did all of that. And, and they forgot. And you know, when we start to become unthankful, we also start to become forgetful. When, when we don't practice thankfulness, when we don't just build it into our character, we don't, we don't come with a spirit of thankfulness and we feel like we're owed we feel like we're, we're entitled, we feel like it should just be done, that's what's expected, then we go about and you know what happens? We start to become forgetful. And we learned yesterday what forgetfulness does to us. And you understand that unthankfulness is really the, the, the seed of that. And it, it, it starts to then go into the next thing and you start to become deceived. You know, if you... You, you come to a place of forgetfulness, you come to a place where you are unthankful, then the next step is actually deception. Look at Romans chapter 1. I told you we're going to turn there. So I hope you're ready for that. Romans chapter 1. And let me show you something here. And it, just like brushing your teeth, over time it erodes. And when you don't address it, when you don't arrest it, it escalates very quickly. And that's like unthankfulness. When we're unthankful, we're, we begin to be forgetful. But then, secondly, we're deceived. Look at Romans chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up in verse 20. Verse 20. Notice there, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He's saying, you look around you, you look at the beauty of nature. You, you look at the, the, the ingenuity of mankind. You look at the creativity that is so inherent with everything that this world has to offer. And he's saying all of that witnesses to a great God and you're without excuse. He continues on in verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. And notice this, neither were thankful. You notice that? It's very early on in this discussion. He says that you see all of the evidence of God. You see that, that when they knew God, they glorified Him. He's saying, you know, we're witnesses of all of these things. They can't deny that at least there is a God. But then the, here's, here's where it was. Their, their appreciation was misplaced. They were not thankful. They looked at it and they just said, Wow. Instead of, wow, thanks God. You know, um, we got to travel. Who's, who's been to New Zealand before? Put your hand up. Who's been to New Zealand? I like New Zealand. Who's been to the South Island? All right, I've been to Christchurch. But who's been to Queenstown? Man, Qu who, who would love to go back to Queenstown? I would, I'd put both hands up. I love Queenstown. 
but Queenstown is a beautiful place. It, when, when we were traveling there for the first time, my youngest was only, what, three months? Oh no, he was one year old, all right? That's how, I can't math this morning, but um, nine, one, three, one, whatever. Um, but he was one year old and, and he had just started to begin to speak a little bit. But you know, one word he learnt, because there was just all these awesome views Every corner, it seemed to be a new lake, a new mountain. And we were all in the car going, wow. And you know, by the end of it, he learned the word, wow. <laughs> the whole time, he was just like, wow. But you know, there's a lot of wows of life. But you know what we should do? We should go, wow. Thanks, God. <laughs> and you know, they, they became unthankful. They became unthankful. They have misplaced their appreciation. And what that led to, if you, we continue to read, look at that, professing themselves to be, no, sorry, in verse 21, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. He says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of, be, uh, of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the Creator more than the, cre uh, the creature, more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. You know what it started with? You, you read through all of it, and we'll talk about it a little bit, but it started with unthankfulness. And it led to deception in this way, firstly, in wrong thinking. You know, this world thinks wrong. This world's thinking is wrong. This world's thinking is corrupt. This world's thinking is just, in many ways, we're so advanced in other areas, but we're so behind and we're so wrong. And what it was, they, they, they started with unthankfulness and a misplaced appreciation. It led to forgetfulness, deception, and it was through this they were wrong in their thinking. They were vain or empty in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. You know what? Their thinking, that thinking that produces no results. It produces a lack of character and a lack of good judgment. A person who is unthankful keeps thinking they're missing out. That they're hard done by. They're, 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 they're the victims of their circumstance. They're the victims of their lives. Does that sound familiar? It sounds familiar to me. That sounds like society in general. They're all owed. They're, they all need compensation for the wrongs that have, done, that have been done to them in their lives. And yet, they live in a country, listen, we live in a country so blessed with so much. And yet, we dare complain. You know, there's that saying, first world problems, right? It's wrong thinking. And they became vain in their imaginations. They, they, they were empty. And, 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 you know, sometimes that's what happens is we become unthankful for what we have and we begin to think wrongly about it. You know, when was the last time you just gave thanks for your mom and dad? And some of you, you have, a, you have a relationship problem with your mom and dad. Some of you, you, you're left not in good terms. And actually, that's what God wants to deal with you about this week. Because the Bible tells us to honor and obey and to regard our parents. But, but some of you, you, it's been a while since you've even given thanks for your mom and dad. And now your thinking is wrong. Now your thinking is, oh, mom and dad, they're such, they're, they're just out to get me. Man, they just don't want me to have fun. Man, they took away my phone. And now, now, I, now I, 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 I can't even keep up with my friends. And oh, they, they, they didn't understand me. You know what that is? You started with unthankfulness. You just weren't thankful. You weren't thankful that they put a roof above your head. You weren't thankful that they put the clothes on your back. You weren't thankful that they made the food and they, they gave you the food on your belly. You, you weren't thankful for all of that and listen. I'm not presuming here this morning 
what your relationship is like, but, but there's an expectation from God what that should be. But there's a wrong thinking, but then there's really wrong introspection. The, thinking they were wise, they became fools. And you know what? Unthankfulness leads to a self-centered and destructive mindset that's actually what it is. It's self-deception. You know what? The center of the universe suddenly becomes all about you. And if it doesn't work out to how you want it to, then suddenly you have grounds to murmur, to complain, to have a bad attitude. And you know what that is? It's just, it starts with this. You're unthankful. And, and you know, we live in a society that is all full of self. Then the, the, what it led to was this, ultimately, wrong theology. And wrong theology, it changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. And you know what it is? Ultimately, you set blame, don't you? Hey, listen. There's, there's a lot of people who want to blame God for everything. And maybe there's some of you here, you're right there. You think your life is unfair. You, you think that God dealt you a, a heavy hand. You, you think that somehow, you know, God, who is a God of love, who is a God of mercy, has forgotten all about you and His heavy hand is on you. And it could just be that out of love, He's chastening you. But listen, ultimately in this passage of Scripture, what unthankfulness led to was just wrong thinking about life, wrong thinking about self, and ultimately wrong thinking about God. They were deceived. You know, we have a world that's so deceived. And again, the characteristic of the last days is unthankfulness. And unthankfulness is really a case of not giving God His place and His due. He's above man. He's the, we ought to worship the, the create, Creator more than the creation. And listen, you are created. You are part of the, the, the creation. You are part of the creature. But the Creator should be the one that we magnify. And we misrepresent God and we see Him in a different light. And you know what Satan wants to do? He wants to diminish God in your sight. He wants you to think that somehow an almighty, all-loving God is against you. You know what that is? It started with unthankfulness. It started with an a lack of, of thankfulness. And what unthankfulness eventually results in is a slippery slope. You know, it goes, goes down to verse 25. Again, who changed the truth of God into a lion, worshipped ser and served the cre creature more than the Creator who was blessed forever. Amen. And you know what? What happens is once you start to go into this slippery slide, it can build into disastrous momentum. It can build into something much more than you wanted to encounter. And I think that's why there's this, uh, there's this in this life, there's all of these who just want to shake their fist at God and they don't want to be thankful for what we learned about yesterday. Just the fact that God made you to be a, a male or female. You know, when was the last time? Listen, whatever the God gave you, who, whoever God gave you to be, God gave that as a gift to you. You have the, ladies, you have the gift of womanhood. Listen, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, young ladies, even Christian young ladies, who will despise what the Bible says about womanhood. And they're bought into the lie that something's better out there. But you know what? How about you start with this? God, thank you that you made me to be. There's a lot of males out there who want to transform their bodies and want to own a different identity and, and, and want to go into really an erosion of their, their, their mental health, their ability to, to have a satisfying life. Why? Because firstly, they just weren't thankful for who God made them to be. They've despised God. They've despised His sovereignty and His choices. And by the way, I'd rather leave the choices of my life in God's hand who knows all things who understands me better than I understand myself. And I'd rather leave it in His hands. And I'd rather understand what He expects of me than to make it up myself because I just know me. There's a lot of things I don't know. 
There's a lot of things that I can stuff up. But I have a, a perfect Heavenly Father who loves me absolutely and unconditionally. And He's made some choices for me and I trust His choices. But listen, listen, when was the last time you thanked God for His choices in your life? When was the last time you just said, Lord, thank you that you made me to be a man, a woman, to be born in this family, to be born in this country, to live in this nation, and those simple things like that. And some of you, I can, I can tell you now, some of your countenances would change daily if you just did that. Some of you would, would, would actually approach life and take a deep breath and go, wow, thanks God. Wow. Look at, look at all the, the, the blessings of life and wow, I know I have problems, but thank you God that you're with me. And, and what that, that happens, what, what then that produces is the, just the right spirit. But you know, if you're unthankful, and, and lastly, you, 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 what it eventually results in is this, it, you, you'll miss what God has, has for you. Listen, there's a lot of people out there who are trying to live an alternative lifestyle. Let's just call it for what it is, Deception. And they're trying to live an alternative lifestyle according to what they want. And they've completely missed what God has for them. I want to tell you that God can give you a better life than you can give yourself. And you know, I think about the choices that God made for me. I think about the different choices I could have made. And I, I, I think about the fact that all of my greatest friends, all of the places I've been to, all, all of the people I've met, uh, met like you guys, you know, I've done that because God made choices for me and because there were times where I had to make a choice to be thankful whether, what, whatever I felt about it or not, uh, whatever I felt about it. And there's times, guys, listen, that you're just not going to feel thankful, that you're not going to completely understand. But, but I want to tell you that, that don't miss, listen, don't miss what God has for you. It, it, don't miss what, what He has planned for you, the all-knowing, the all-loving, the everlasting Father, He's given you something that you don't want to miss. And what it was, they, it made void what God had planned. It, 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 it just cut through that, but then at the end, it really does this. It mocks the very God that blessed them. You know, I don't think any of us here intentionally want to mock God. But you know, if you live a, a, an unthankful life, what you're doing is incidentally you're mocking God. Incidentally, you're saying to God, you know what, um, I don't really care for what you've given me. I, I don't really care about this. And, and what you're saying is, God, you know nothing. And that's a mockery. And just, just those very words. And what I'm saying is, at all starts this morning, if you would just adjust your thinking and you would just say, you know what? Wow. Thanks, God. You know, I think all of us here, we've had, already had a great week. But what, I wonder if we've even taken the time to say thank you. And, and not to the leaders. I hope you have said thank you to the leaders. But I hope you've, you've firstly said thanks to God. I hope you woke up this morning and said, thanks, God, for another day. You know, thanks, God, and... Yes, the pancake wasn't that great. And the coffee's been, you know, it's survival. And yeah, my team's not winning. And yeah, the leader gave, you know, arbitrary points that we know nothing about. And yeah, I see Ray every day and he's here. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Thanks, God. And listen. You know, when you do that, you start to see life the way God wants you to see life. And you start to realize how blessed you truly are.